How many people today, both inside and outside of the Orthodox Church, equate Orthodoxy with Eastern or Byzantine, Greek or Slavic? Metropolitan Anthony Bashir of Blessed Memory sternly warns us that we must not equate being Orthodox with being Eastern. Rather, he insists on the Catholicity of our apostolic faith in its various forms and expressions. And he is not just speaking about ethnicity and cultural customs, but about the liturgical rites of the universal church. Father Alexander Schmemann expresses the same thought when he writes, The unity of rite in the Orthodox Church is comparatively a late phenomenon, and the Church never considered liturgical uniformity an essential condition of her unity. The Orthodox Church has never considered its liturgy to be frozen once and for all in the limited cultural forms of 10th century Byzantium, says Father John Meindorf. The variety of liturgical forms in the Church is normative and not a cause for concern. These variations are a good and proper work of the Holy Spirit. One of the dangerous temptations we face today is the increasing tendency to define the Orthodox faith in light of our anti-Western sentiments. If we identify genuine Orthodoxy as being un-Western, we effectually degrade Orthodoxy to a reactionary group that is defined by what it opposes. We also run the risk of turning the Catholic Orthodox Church into an Eastern cultural preserve and forfeiting our mission to all peoples in all places and times. The West was once Orthodox, but became estranged from her Orthodox heritage. Orthodoxy's deprivation of her own Western liturgical tradition is the tragic result of the schism and has served to obscure her Catholicity. God, in His mercy, has preserved the fullness of the faith in the Eastern Orthodox Church, not because she is Eastern, but because He is merciful. The Orthodox Church is not deficient, but she is poorer for the loss of her Western expressions. In this day, we are experiencing a work of grace in which God is restoring to the Orthodox Church that which rightly belongs to her, and that which will enrich her and make her more effective in her mission to the West. In the words of Father Paul Schneerla, the Western Rite restores the normal cultural balance in the Church. The pre-schismatic condition is restored between East and West in symbol and potentiality. A primary result of this reunion is that the Church proclaims her Catholicity. She demonstrates that she is the ecumenical Church, not a tribal religion. Today our Western Orthodox tradition is being restored. But how did we get here? Not long ago, large numbers of Orthodox peoples came to the West searching for a better life. These Orthodox immigrants integrated into American life in many ways, while retaining their faith community as a haven. These Orthodox communities became Eastern cultural preserves within the Western landscape of America. Over time, Western Christians became interested in Orthodoxy through their exposure to these Orthodox communities, and the Orthodox Church awoke to her mission of sharing her faith with the West. There has been notable success in the last 30 years with thousands of Westerners becoming Eastern Orthodox. The Antiochian Archdiocese pioneered English language liturgy and outreach to non-Orthodox Americans, and today over 60% of our priests are converts but we still face great challenges. We are not growing as we once were, and our children are leaving the church in alarming numbers. The percentage of Orthodox Christians in the general population has not grown in the last 100 years. So what is the future of the Eastern Orthodox Church in the West? Father Schmemann warned that we must not become a group of exiles or a spiritual and cultural ghetto to be perpetuated against all odds. Many prominent Orthodox leaders, such as Father Schmemann, along with the towering figure of Metropolitan Philip, insisted that we must work toward an indigenous American Orthodox Church. There are a great many non-Orthodox Christians who are attracted by our Orthodox faith, but could not find a congenial home in the spiritual world of Eastern Christendom. Is there a place for these people in the Orthodox Church? Must they become Eastern in their liturgical piety and ethos? Is it possible to become truly, completely orthodox and truly, completely rooted in our Western Christian heritage at the same time? Again, Father Alexander Schmemann writes, 
Our claim is that our church is orthodox, or more simply, the church. And this is a frightening claim. It implies that it is the faith for all men, for all countries, for all cultures. So what is our task, and how do we fulfill our mission as Eastern Orthodox Christians living in the West? There is more than one answer to this question. First, we have communities which are predominantly ethnic and need to be ministered to in their native languages. Second, there are those communities which have a vision of an Eastern Orthodox Church within the American culture. The liturgy, devotional life, music, calendar, and customs of these English-speaking communities are firmly rooted in the Eastern ethos, even if the members speak with an American accent. These two models are a part of the answer and come with their own challenges, but here we want to come in yet another synergistic way of fulfilling our mission in the West. That third way is the restoration of a truly indigenous Western Orthodox tradition, a tradition which originally formed Western civilization and remains latent here in America. To be truly Orthodox yet fully American seems to be the only real Orthodox tradition. How and where do we then begin? The recovery of the Western tradition in the Orthodox Church is important for two reasons. First, it is an essential witness to our Catholicity, declaring that Orthodoxy cannot be equated with a particular ethnicity, culture, or ethos, whether Byzantine, Greek, Slavic, or Eastern in general, but is for all countries, times, peoples, and cultures. Second, our recovery of the Western Orthodox tradition is critical for our mission to evangelize the West and bring her back to her own Orthodox heritage. The monks teach us that we must find Christ in our cell. Our cell, our congenial home, is the West and there exists a rich and holy Western Orthodox tradition which is truly indigenous to our Western culture and civilization. Shall we disregard this latent treasure which belongs to us and has formed so many of the great saints of the Church? We have a visible representation of our Western Orthodox heritage in the architecture of many great cathedrals, monasteries, and churches. The Western tradition may be fragile and in decay, but are we to simply tear down her temples and monastic houses? along with the liturgy and ethos of the West? This Western Orthodox heritage, as architecture, must be reclaimed, rebuilt, and repaired. The scaffolding is already in place, and the refurbishing has already begun in earnest through the growing Western Rite communities which are flourishing. We need the support and advocacy of our Eastern Rite brethren to continue the holy work of restoring the wall. The Eastern Orthodox Church has moved into the West and accepted the mission of returning her to the faith of the fathers, the same fathers who established and built these very edifices to the glory of God. Should we tear them down? Destroy them? Ignore them? They belong to us, to our forefathers, to our own Catholic heritage. No one denies that the Western tradition has largely been lost to the Orthodox Church, but the architecture is there waiting to be reclaimed. The venerable Western Orthodox tradition is crying out to be resuscitated, but what will our response be? Is the creation of a new hybrid culture through importing Eastern tradition the only viable way to spread Orthodoxy in the West? This may be part of the solution, but it cannot be the only solution. We must also advocate for the full restoration of a vibrant Western Rite Orthodox expression. The restoration of our architecture and of the sacred chant of the West is a vital part of restoring the Orthodox West as a whole. The Orthodox faith must be capable of expression in terms of the life and thought of Western peoples. Western Orthodoxy cannot be constituted merely by planting colonies of Orthodox people from the East in Western countries. True Western Orthodoxy is to be found by bodies of Western people, members of Western nations, coming with all their Western background, their Western habits and traditions, into the circle of the Orthodox faith. Then we should have an Orthodoxy which was really Western, because its memory was Western. A memory of the Christian history of the West, not as the West now remembers it, but purged and set in perspective by the Orthodox faith. 
We already have a solid foundation, walls, and a roof. We just have to inhabit the temple. The Western liturgical tradition has been stable and intact for centuries. The Vicar General of the Western Rite Vicariate, Archpriest Father Edward Hughes, says the following. Since the time of St. Gregory the Great, the Roman Rite remained almost exactly the same until the 1970s. The Roman Rite before St. Gregory was hardly different either. I say these things because some of us, especially some of our Eastern Byzantine brethren, imagine that the West used the same services as the East before the split. In fact, it was the Byzantines who changed radically how they worship. St. John Chrysostom never heard Only Begotten Son or the Cherubic Hymn. He never wore a Sakos or a Byzantine mitre either. If he saw a modern Byzantine hierarchical liturgy, he would not recognize what it was at all. If St. Gregory the Great or St. Benedict, or St. Leo visited one of the Western Rite parishes, they would be quite at home, know exactly where they were, and might even sing along with the chants. The recovery of Orthodoxy in the West is well underway in our Western Rite parishes, where parishioners are daily living a Western Orthodox life. If you visit these communities, you will witness many things which are deeply embedded in Western culture, but are at the same time completely Orthodox. This rich liturgical life looks and sounds different, but it is Orthodox. As Bishop Basil pointed out, Orthodox who are of the Byzantine Rite know that the way one worships is not a proof of anything. We have been in churches, and some of us have relatives who attend these churches, that look like ours and smell like ours, and if you would go to communion, it would probably taste like ours. The music sounds like our music, the accents that the people have are the same accents that we have, but it's not our church. So for Orthodox people, the fact that something looks the same and smells the same is not a proof of anything. It is in this sense that our Eastern Rite people are coming to a greater appreciation for the Western Rite. It looks different, the vestments are different, the incense smells different, the words and music are different, and it is the Church. The Western Rite has a rich liturgical life, just as the Eastern Rite does, with its own cultural ethos and tradition. You will find our clergy wearing Western vestments, our choirs singing Gregorian chant, and our churches adorned with sacred art in the Western tradition. You will see the ancient Mass of St. Gregory the Great, and the Requiem Mass for the Dead, which contains some of the most impressive musical settings ever written. There is the nuptial wedding mass and votive masses for the sick and for the propagation of the faith. You can participate in the daily office of St. Benedict of Nursia, perhaps the oldest daily office in constant use. There are also numerous Western devotional rites, wedding rites, baptismal rites, litanies and processions, blessings and consecrations. The solemn rites of Holy Week and Pascha are the glorious anchor for the liturgical year. Western Rite Orthodox parishes also follow the ancient Western liturgical calendar. Of the major liturgical seasons in the Church, Advent and Christmas began in the West and tended to be more developed there than in the East. This is evident in Western cultures today. The Western Rite provides an opportunity to draw on the inherent Orthodoxy of these seasons in a culture that already accentuates them. The Western Rite calendar restores the veneration of many Orthodox saints and feast days which have been missing during the estrangement from our Western heritage. On St. Patrick's Day, St. Valentine's Day, All Hallows' Eve, All Souls' Day, Ash Wednesday, and many other such days, our Western culture is called back to the Orthodox faith by the witness of our Western Rite communities which are celebrating these feast days. Orthodox Christians in the West have recovered a holy relic buried and lost the Orthodox Church for so long many had forgotten it. But now, this sacred relic of the Western tradition has been unearthed and returned to the Orthodox Church. What are we to do with it? Do we leave it buried because we have managed without it for so long? Do we reluctantly bring it into the temple but stow it in the cupboard, still tarnished and covered with dirt? Or do we clean it up and put it in a beautiful reliquary, venerate it as holy, and let it shine forth? The Western Orthodox tradition is a holy relic that has been recovered and will help return the West to her own sacred history. It is a gift, a pearl of great price. The Western Rite calls America to the Orthodox faith 
with an ancestral voice. It is a voice both native and congenial. It speaks with an accent that draws out the latent orthodoxy in the West. Not only does the Western Rite revitalize the inherent orthodoxy of the Western liturgical tradition, but it serves to organically baptize American culture where appropriate, and thus makes it easier for Westerners to enter the Church. This has always been the protocol for apostolic Christian missions. Imagine a young girl, lost, taken away from her mother. After many years, the daughter who has been lost, a grown woman now, manages to find her mother and presents herself. Mother, I am your daughter who is lost, and now I have found you. What if the mother responded by saying, I have lived for many years and have learned to get along without you. I don't know you anymore. I don't need you in my life. This would be an ugly response. What if the mother was to welcome the daughter back but make her live in a back room as a second-class family member? This too would be horrible. The lost child has come back to the bosom of the church and should be welcomed with great joy. A purple robe put around her shoulders, the fatted calf killed in a party thrown, for that which has been lost is found, and this is a joy to the whole household. On May 31, 1958, his Beatitude Alexander III, Patriarch of Antioch of Blessed Memory, in consultation with the heads of the other autocephalous Orthodox churches, authorized His Eminence Metropolitan Anthony Bashir of Blessed Memory to establish the Western Rite in the Antiochian Archdiocese. The following is an excerpt from Metropolitan Anthony's report to the 1958 Archdiocesan Convention. With the blessing of the Patriarch and following the example of other Orthodox Patriarchates, we have made it possible for Western Christians to enter the Church and preserve ancient forms which are so precious to them as ours are to us. In the past 40 years, Orthodoxy has entered the Western world as never before. Many Westerners have joined our Church and adopted our Eastern modes of worship. Others have asked why they must become Eastern in order to become Orthodox. Their French and German and English ancestors were Orthodox before the Popes took them out of the Church in the 11th century but they were Western Orthodox. Our scholars and theologians have examined this claim and found it just and reasonable. For over 20 years, various Orthodox hierarchs have been receiving Western Christians and permitting them to use rites congenial with their old Orthodox history and Western culture and way of life. So how will the Orthodox Church fulfill her mission in the West? With these three options. To retain to focus on ministry to ethnic Orthodox in native languages, and to emphasize preserving Eastern traditions in the cultural preserves of these communities. To recreate. To form a hybrid and newly indigenous Christian culture in the West, which is still fully Eastern in American Orthodoxy. To restore. To graft the West back into the Church through rehabilitation and reclamation of the Western tradition, which is latent here in the West. And we have a duty to this third option for these three reasons. Firstly, for charity. Second, for its effectiveness in the mission of the Orthodox Church in the West. And thirdly, to show forth our Catholicity and to reclaim what belongs to the Church but has been lost, buried, or is in disrepair. There is no theoretical question about which of these three options will be used. All three are already a reality and a part of our mission in the West. We need to see these types of communities not in competition, but mutually beneficial to fulfilling our mission in America.